I've been having a lot of fun with these audit contests on Code Arena because things become a lot more fun when it starts to make sense. So recently, I feel I have made a lot of progress in terms of reading the past audit reports and trying to understand the high risk and medium risk findings. So I'm not just pretty much submitting very basic QA reports and gas optimizations. In this video, I'm going to go through some of the learnings that I have done, uh, the contests that I have participated in since the last video, and talk about some of the contests that have been recently running on Code Arena. So to start off a leaderboard update, we have moved up a bit on the leaderboard because one more audit result came out yesterday. So this is the result of three audit contests that I have done. Pretty much the very first three that I entered on Code Arena. They were very basic uh, QA and gas optimization reports that you can uh, check my previous video if you want to get an idea of what kind of findings I was submitting for these very first contests. So this is the result of three of those contests. I've still got about 19 or so that is pending results. So it'll be interesting when the results come out for those contests. So for most of the contests that I submitted early on, I spent probably about one to two hours on each, just finding those very low hanging fruit gas optimizations and the QA, like low risk findings. With the exception of some of the more recent contests that I have done, I spent maybe about four to five hours on some of those, and I did manage to find some high risk findings, which I'm pretty sure are some of them would be legitimate. So pretty excited to see if they do get judged as legitimate. And like I said, it's definitely more fun when you start to understand how some of the high risk findings work and get a bit more deeper and technical into uh, these audit contests. So for the active contests that are running right now, a very interesting one and a big milestone for Code Arena is this $1 million open C contest that is happening right now and it's still got seven days on this contest left. So a million dollar prize pool, this is the biggest ever on Code Arena. And it's pretty crazy because it includes a $30,000 gas optimization pot, which for previous reports, when I was submitting those gas optimization reports, those uh, pots were probably only about 2K to 3K maximum. This one being 30K, like some of the really simple low hanging fruit gas optimizations that I found uh, for some of those other contests. Those were paying about $200 or so. If this is 30K, then potentially it could be one or 2K for those gas optimization reports. So that's pretty cool to see. I did submit some findings for this contest. So this contest is actually slightly different to the other ones on Code Arena. This one has some extra rules around it where the million dollars is only the pot if a high severity finding is found and it increases to 430k if a medium severity is found, which I'm not sure if it is going to be found. The code base is a lot of assembly, which I haven't actually looked into yet. So at this point, it's probably a bit over my head, but hopefully one of the other guys will find a medium or high and push this up to 1 million. This will be a pretty big milestone if it actually hits that $1 million pot on Code Arena. Now, because of the influx of new users coming to this platform just for the OpenSea contest, they are actually unfortunately restricting new warden registrations to application only. So you have to provide some sort of proof that you have done audits before at a certain level before they um, accept your application where before it was pretty much an open door anyone can join. I'm pretty sure they're gonna remove this requirement once this contest finishes. So if you do wanna join Code Arena, you'll be able to join after this uh, OpenSea contest finishes in around seven days. 
So like I mentioned, I've recently started submitting more medium to high risk findings on this platform. And that is pretty much all helped mainly from reading these past audit reports that is uh, publicly available for anyone to read. Now I'll share some of my tips on reading these reports. But actually before that, I'll mention Securium because in my last video I mentioned I read through these Audit Findings 101 and Audit Findings 201 on Securium. After going through these Securium findings, sort of just um, skimming through them and uh, building a mental mind map of what the broad categories of uh, vulnerabilities in smart contracts are, I went back to reading the audit reports on Code Arena. And after going through Securium, reading the Code Arena reports actually made a lot more sense uh, because of that uh, mind map that I sort of built up because you get exposure to a lot of findings pretty quickly reading through these Securium findings. And you get 200 findings in total. You can organize them into your notes in sort of like a mind map form. So you can start to generalize and uh, put these each of these findings into their particular category in your mind and it it does make a lot more sense once i went through these findings and then went back to code arena and started uh, reviewing the uh, mediums and highs on code arena so for these findings what i did was i organized them into my notes and put them into these various categories and sort of after that i can scroll through them quickly to review this more similar findings together which did help a lot in understanding and generalizing some of these concepts some of you in my previous video asked me whether i could share my notes and yeah i can definitely upload this onto github i'll leave a link in the description below but uh, honestly, it's probably better off if you uh, do this yourself, as in um, start making these folders in Joplin or like another note-taking software. Put these into groups, uh, start making these folders and drop or just copy and paste these findings into those notes. Um, I think it makes more sense if you do it yourself. But uh, if you want to have a look at how I organized this in my mind when I was reviewing these findings, uh, you're welcome to do so. I'll upload it uh, onto GitHub and share it uh, in the uh, one of the links below. So after going through Securium findings, I came back to Code Arena and I started reading uh, these high level and medium uh, severity findings and, and just tried to dive into them in a bit more detail to uh, understand them and it definitely was a lot easier after uh, coming back from a securium uh, when i first started reading these past order reports uh, the high level findings and even the mediums it didn't really make too much sense but now it does uh, i can actually understand it and uh, sort of uh, keep building uh, my uh, mental mind map of uh, these vulnerabilities as I uh, read them. So when I first started on Code Arena, I, I'll just mention that I started actually, uh, because I couldn't understand like the high level and medium severity findings, I actually started reading uh, these past audit reports from the bottom up, right? So I would look at these low severity findings and the gas optimization reports which everything makes sense even if you are completely new to smart contract auditing uh, it's very basic uh, low hanging fruit type of stuff um, it should make sense and i started by making sense of uh, these findings and uh, built up a bit of a methodology in terms of submitting these for order contest which was what i was doing probably for about the first 10 contests that i entered it was purely la gas optimization and qa reports for these low risk findings um, like i said most of them are very low hanging fruit they're kind of best practice type of stuff like 
for example, constants should not uh, be uh, using magic numbers and they should be defined, uh, which is, you know, basic uh, programming uh, best practice type of stuff, which you can find um, in code fairly easily and submit them as a QA reports. And as you can see, even these QA reports and very easy gas optimizations, I was getting about a 200 or so dollars every contest, which I was spending maybe one to two hours on each. So uh, now back to the high severity findings and the medium ones. So after going through a Securium bootcamp with those 200 findings, I went back and started reading from the top down. So going from the high uh, to the mediums. And do take note that some of these high risk findings are found by multiple people. For example, this one was found by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, like 10 different auditors found this high severity finding in this uh, particular competition. And for some of the other uh, high uh, risk findings, it's only found by one person. So in Code Arena, if a finding is found by one person, then they get a bigger share of the pot because if it's found by multiple person, the reward is actually split between everyone who found that particular issue. But what I found useful was when uh, reviewing these high risk findings, I'm actually going through and reviewing these findings where uh, multiple people have found uh, the particular finding because what I found was is if you review the findings on GitHub, you can actually see the other ones marked as a duplicate. So for example, you can check out this one which is marked as a duplicate and this one. So these are the reports that the various other people found and submitted for this finding and it was marked as a duplicate and rewarded accordingly in the competition. So four findings that are found by multiple people, you can be pretty assured that it's not some really weird esoteric vulnerability that is extremely hard to find. I mean, 10 people found this thing it should be fairly easy to find if you review it properly and go through the steps of understanding it. I would call these probably like low hanging fruit type of uh, category in the high risk findings. Um, I started reviewing these first because first of all, they're probably easier to understand than some of the more esoteric vulnerabilities found by only one person. And second of all, you get a lot of different reports to review of uh, how people actually wrote up this particular finding. So if you read this and it doesn't make any sense, um, you can review some of these other ones and see how other people wrote this up. This is, uh, this is where I found a very useful where some people don't really write it up in a way that resonates with you, right? So reviewing how this particular finding, just this is one finding, is written up and uh, how different people describe the issue. They sort of come at it from different points of view and how they describe things. Some of these, uh, how it's written up, will really resonate with you and once you start to understand uh, the details of this uh, particular finding, uh, you can go back and uh, going backwards and forwards between uh, these various uh, reports for this finding, uh, it really starts to make a lot of sense and it helps you understand it a lot more. So this is how I am approaching uh, understanding these high risk and medium risk findings. Start with the ones that are found by multiple people uh, because yeah, it's a lot easier to understand that way and Obviously, uh, it would be ideal to understand these uh, more uh, esoteric or hard to find uh, findings as well because eventually uh, you would want to uh, find uh, high risk findings solo because those would be uh, paid out the best uh, how on, just based on how Code Arena Order Contests are structured. But I mean, even if you find these high risk findings and it's shared between like 10 different people, the high risk finding is still worth about $1,000 or so, roughly speaking. 
um, if you manage to find one. So still very decent. And if you have a pretty big pot and you find a high risk finding by yourself, um, I've seen some people get paid like 10K to 20K just for a high risk finding that they found by themselves. But obviously uh, this is what I am ideally trying to work towards, finding high severity findings by myself. Uh, but uh, at this point, working progress, um, reading more reports and trying to find those vulnerabilities in uh, the audit contest that I'm participating in. So this is the progress that I have made uh, for these uh, reports. I've gone through about 20 or so reports. Now there are in total 90 reports um, on Code Arena. Uh, Code Arena actually started back in February 2021, which is not that long ago. Um, I thought it was running for a bit longer than that, uh, but it seems like it's only been running for a bit more than a year. In terms of the leaderboard, if we go to all time, um, you can scroll down and see in total there are only about 200 people who has ever participated in just one um, audit contest. So not that many people into this at all. And at this point, I do feel there is a lot of easy money on the table for people who uh, want to get into smart contract auditing. Not a lot of people doing it. It pays seemingly much better than traditional bug bounties. So this is an area where I sort of want to uh, focus on when it comes to um, bug bounty hunting in my uh, spare time. So I'll keep you guys posted on any movements on the leaderboard for me and all the learnings that I'm going through. Currently this is from three contests. Uh, like I mentioned before, I've still got 19 or so contests pending the results for. And for some of those I submitted, um, I've submitted a bunch of medium findings um, in the past couple of weeks actually, and a couple of high risk findings. It'll be interesting to see if those actually get through and are valid findings. I'm fairly confident that at least one of the high level finding is legit. Um, although it's probably fairly easy to find, but It'll be one of the first findings, uh, one of the first high risk findings that I have submitted if that actually goes through. So looking forward to uh, the results of more contests coming through. And uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated on uh, my learnings um, in this space. Now I'm pretty new into this space. Uh, you can check my uh, YouTube uh, upload history where I uploaded that first video on smart contract uh, auditing going through the damn vulnerable DeFi exercises. And that was in January this year. And between that time, I was massively burnt out uh, for probably like two months during that time, actually from reading these past audit reports um, on Code Arena. I got massively burnt out uh, trying to understand these high risk findings too early on when I was just, you know, getting into it for the first time. Um, so, so since January, there was minus two months, probably three months into smart contract code auditing. So not that long at all. And um, surprised that I actually did manage to uh, get some mediums and highs recently, but yeah, we'll see when the results come out to, uh, whether those are valid. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. Uh, I'll keep you guys uh, posted on yeah any of my learnings. So if uh, you guys want to uh, follow uh, the learnings and learn together along with me, um, yeah, that'll be fun. I am really enjoying uh, learning about these findings and participating in these contests. Yeah, really fun stuff. Uh, look forward to uh, giving you guys more updates in the coming weeks and months.